Welcome to the November edition of Texarkana Magazine. We are here at the home of Mitch and Jordan James. Thank you so much for allowing us to talk with you as November is National Prematurity Awareness Month. So Mitch, what was it like finding out that you were having twins? It was exciting. A little, a little nervous. What about you? Were you excited? Uh, we were really, I was really excited. Um, we had had some fertility issues before that. So when there's a lot of time you're wanting to be pregnant and then you finally are, it's, we were just super excited. And it was two. So, you know, yes. we, were, we were pretty yes. excited about it. So Jordan, did you enjoy your pregnancy? And during that time, were there any complications that came about? Or no, I tell us about really that? enjoyed it. It only lasted six months, but I super enjoyed it. I mean, I was so happy. I was a little, um, did have a little morning sickness, but it's like I didn't even care. You know, no. we were just, I wanted to go do everything. I mean, that is how yes. excited we were um, just to be having these babies, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and there were no complications. Like, I mean, I felt pretty great and everything was fine until that day. Right. So tell us about the day Hank and Margot were born. Got a phone call. Hey, come up to the doctor's office. We're going to go up to the hospital, get some tests run, check um, contractions, those things. And they said, well, it looks like we might be coming a little early. So we kind of prepared our minds for that. Um, a lot of things were going through your head. What are we going to do? Are they going to be healthy? We were, you know, the normal stuff that parents probably go through when they're thinking of a early birth. Mm -hmm. What was um, that like for you that day? So he was at work, and I had been to the grocery store, and I had come home, and I had a little bit of blood, like so small that maybe you wouldn't have even noticed mm -hmm. it. So I called the doctor's office, and they said, maybe, you know, maybe you should come up here. So they, uh, when they hooked me up, they said, you're in labor. And I remember I said, no, I'm, no, I'm not. <laughs> and he said, this right. is Dr. J. Yeah. He said, you are. And, um, he said, you need to, you know, need to go to labor and delivery. That was my next question. How many weeks were you yeah. into your pregnancy? 27 weeks. And it's funny now I know, I do know different stories and people that have, you know, had children that early but I didn't at the time and so kind of opens up a, a new community of right. people that oh well we had the mm -hmm. same experience we checked into the hospital at maybe 3 30 that afternoon mm -hmm. and then so they do all the things they, they you know give you magnesium I was just devastated by the way Mitch did really good Mitch is even and mm -hmm. I, I hit it very well yeah <laughs> um but, okay, so they, you know, they give you magnesium, all the things to stop premature labor. Mm -hmm. So that night, they thought they had it stopped. So kind of everybody went home. Of course, Mitch stayed. Then in the middle of the night, they said, do you want me to help you move? Because they said, don't move. They had me very, being very still. Dr. J and I discussed getting to Children's yeah. Little Rock. Right. Um, yeah, that's it was tough. real foggy that night. Mm-hmm. It was raining as well, so we couldn't go by helicopter or by road. So they, they prioritize you on the flight list. I was first on the flight list. Like they, they wanted us out of there, right. you know, because that early they just they really wanted him to be right. born in Little Rock. So they had us first on the flight list, and I can still remember laying in the bed and hearing like it was a storm, like a storm. No, the helicopters were not flying, and right. and then and I had them before. So you at did. three, like three a.m., that I was at a nine, which was it was just like all of a sudden. So the amount of time between when you found out you were in labor and then having them twelve hours. 12 hours. Mm -hmm. So that was very um, quick. Very, and I can yeah. remember from um, being at the grocery store mm -hmm. to mm -hmm, having <laughs> yeah. the babies. They put me to sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was out. I was not awake for the, for them being born. But I can remember when they were putting me to sleep. I, they were both leaning over me. Doctor J. I remember thinking, "There's Doctor J and there's Doctor West. Mm -hmm. They're they're both here. Mm -hmm. They were both, you know." And they let um, they let Mitch in the room, which they normally yeah. don't Wouldn't, in right. those situations. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of funny. I was completely asleep. He's the only one that got to. Yeah. So you might want to ask him yes. about how it went. So after what, that. what was that experience like? Um, seeing that it was two born. You know. The profession I have, I kind of go into that mode. I went from excited dad to nervous dad to work mode. Yeah, work mode. Mm -hmm. So once they got him out and cried, it was that's that's the relief I was 
wanting. Mm -hmm. So how long were the twins in the NICU and did they come home, ultimately end up coming home together or separate? Uh, Hank was three months and Margo was three and a half, four months. Mm -hmm. They go by their weight, trying to get them to what they were expected to be at birth. What were some of their struggles and complications during the time of the NICU stay? Okay, so so they're always you know worried about their lungs, trying to get them to mm -hmm. breathe on their own. And then you're just trying to put weight on them. So they're trying to keep them still. I mean, we didn't hold them for two, a week, a yeah, week. I think it was a week and a half. They, they did, uh -huh. they were on the ventilator for a couple of days and uh, went to just a nasal cannula for a couple of weeks. Margo weighed 115 and Hank weighed 26. Wow. Yeah. Um, I, okay, so Mitch got to see it like when they came out and I had, because I had been asleep, they won't, mm -hmm. You know, I had to wake up, and they won't let you get up and walk right after you've been right had surgery or, right. you know, been intubated. So I had to wait for a while. So, like, I wake up, and they did tell me, like, they're okay. Mm -hmm. It was like they, later that day, I guess. Yeah, it was, like, later that day. I slept a long time, I think. Mm -hmm. So they show, me the, they show me the pictures. And, you know, when you look at pictures on a phone... It's. A, I thought, oh, they look pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, right? They look. Also, I, they're here. And they made it. Like, this is yeah. great. Yeah, they look pretty good. And oh, y'all, when I so the first time I saw them, so they, I waited twelve hours. They took me in a up there in a wheelchair, you know, because I'd been cut. I couldn't walk up there. And um, I, they were. I kept saying, oh my gosh, if that if I had not uh, been sitting down, I feel like I would have fallen down. Yeah, they you, were I so could little. Hold them in. They were one just, of them in my hand. Just so small. And they were in these isolates, like these separate little isolates, and their skin was just so red because they're not, like their skin wasn't ready, ready. to be out, right. you know? Like they're still supposed to be inside. It just, like you could look at them and think like, you're not, it's, you're not supposed to be out yet. Right. You know, you're right. still, you're, you still need to be mm -hmm. in. So you had right. mentioned before, but tell us more about the doctors and nurses who cared for Hank and Margot and mm -hmm. the special bonds and things that maybe you all experienced with the caregivers? Yes. Uh, so many of them I've run into now. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was like a, you turn them into a family because you spend three, four months mm -hmm. up there. Dr. Keeney kind of runs the whole NICU up there mm -hmm. and she's got a great staff of uh, doctors that come uh, every two weeks and kind of take over that, her role. And then the nurses there are just they're there every day doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, making sure your your child or children uh, thrive the way they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. I tell the nurses all the time, I do remind them, like, y'all are so important. They're, of course, taking care of the babies, but, like, how important they are to the mother because um, sure. any first-time mother, you know, it's, you know, it's a little difficult, but... It, there's such a feeling of which ne we there's we still don't know why I went into labor early. Just really, really, they've just said you know you just couldn't carry twins, you know. But you just certainly have a feeling of um, a little bit of a feeling of guilt, like I'm supposed to have carried you all the way, you know, and now you're in this bad position. Which of course that's, right. but um, that's just hard to shake, and so it's a very you know hard time and those nurses wow that i mean they could either they were just either making it or breaking it for you that day and right. um making you feel super comfortable and and we all i mean i became friends with them yeah. you know i just spent so much time with them that's awesome uh and i mean i still i still keep up with them I had one that came and spent the night shift at our house after they came home she came and stayed stayed up that was her normal hours so mm -hmm. she came for a couple of days and kind of took care of them so we could get some rest you're supposed to discharge usually they say you'll discharge at um, when they are term and mm -hmm. hank did discharge at term so three months he was there three months my due date was february, february 16th yeah wow. 16th and i had him november 22nd also that time of year like every november uh, not as much now, but those first two or three years in November, like just the smell, you know, the mm -hmm. change of the seasons when it starts to smell like the air smells cooler. Right. Like it would just, it would, you know, that even bring just back that smell memories. kind of bring back. Because that was the week of Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving was on a Thursday. I went into labor on a Monday and they were born on a Tuesday. So Hank stayed till around like February 16th. Mm -hmm. So he was, you know, term. Um, but Margo was not eating. A baby cannot leave the NICU until they're breathing well, 
and not having um, apnea, apnea mm -hmm. and they have to be able to eat on their own right. or you can't because of right. course they'd had a feeding tube the whole time and we work on it and we've been working on that eating and Margo just wasn't but they kept saying she'll get it she'll get it so they discharged Hank so he comes home we noticed his eye was protruding right. sometimes the preemie's head can be a little mm -hmm. misshapen mm -hmm because it's soft and it, I just thought, well, <laughs> right. Hope that works out right. for him. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, they were like, you probably need to see an ophthalmologist. So we went to Shreveport and saw this ophthalmologist and he's like, something's back there. Something is behind his eye. So we went, he sent us immediately to the hospital in Shreveport and they did a, try to do an MRI, which didn't, didn't go well because of the anesthesia which, uh, with, with, Hank. Anyways, we were we were there for eight days in the pediatric ICU of Shreveport, trying to figure out what this was, and it was a mat. It was like the golf ball size. So mm -hmm. Hank was little. He was like a seven pound term baby, and the thing in his head was a golf ball size. All right. of that unrelated to prematurity, but we were there. So we didn't see Margot for eight days. Yeah, that um, was that was kind of that was a um, that was scary. They had just found out a few years earlier that those hemangiomas will sometimes um, respond to uh, like a beta blocker, an oral beta blocker, mm -hmm. panelol. And he got on that and that, uh, he was on that for a year, shrinking that. And you could almost see his eye go down. When we got back from that, they said, they set us down and we're like, we need to talk. You know, she's, something's not right. She's not eating. And that's another thing that we never really figured out what it was, but she, um, they usually will not discharge you until they can eat, but the, we could tell like she's not going to eat. And mm -hmm. so they discharged us with a, an NG tube. So she literally had a feeding tube, um, for a year. Um, she would eat some, but she just would not eat a whole bottle. And it's really important with a preemie to have, they've got to have food to, um, for their brain, for their brain development, you know, they've got to have the weight mm -hmm. and they let us go. They normally wouldn't do that. They normally would not let you go. Um, yeah, they, being, being that I'm a nurse, they were. Yeah. Okay. They, they normally they were okay with to, with uh, us taking her home mm -hmm. and handling the tube feeding. Mm -hmm. uh, they normally want like a G tube to put in one. Mm -hmm. um, and we were trying hard not to have surgery on a small one either, so mm -hmm. it kind of. So, but she had that um, too for a year, um, and we fed her every three hours for a year. So in the night. You know, and I would, we would try to feed her every time um, by bottle, and then however much she didn't mm -hmm. take, then we would tube that. And that's and, what your logs. Yes. Yes. Or, and I've got these logs that I pulled out of just for a whole year, every three hours. There's a lot of paper, a lot of notebook paper, mm -hmm. and I still have it every single the time, every day, you know, the time, every three hours, how much she ate. And, and then we would take those with us to the, um, you know, to the doctor every, cause we were trying to figure it out. Is she going to eat? Do we need to right. do something else? Um, mm -hmm. and every time she would pull it, Mitch would put it back down, put the, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we did it. I went to the x-ray room with her to do a, a scan mm -hmm. while she was physically eating a bottle and she drank it like a champ. And then for whatever reason, we would go upstairs and she would not, not do that. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. But well, bottom line, anatomically, it was right. It was yeah. Normal. Nothing was wrong. Nothing was <laughs> right. wrong. They just could not figure it out. That's she why. didn't. She she did not eat until she really never drank a bottle well. So she did not get that feeding tube out for mm -hmm. a year um, when she could kind of eat some solid foods, mm -hmm. and that's what we were able to get down there. So that was kind of wow. Something unexplained mm -hmm. um, that just stuck with us after we were home. Mm -hmm. So tell us when you started seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, improvement with the twins, or a change for the better? Uh, it, was it took about a year. Um, when she, when Margo started getting the taste of food, uh, we started with some ice cream, which every child would love. Right, that's great, um, <laughs> smart. That, it's like a spark went off on her and she just wow. gradually started eating. Um, we had the tube out, we kept trying to give her different things and she just started eating like, like a, every child should. Right. So about a year. She's a. They're both great eaters mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And then I guess with with Hank's eye, he was on that uh, the medication for a year. We had to do a couple scans, a couple doctors' visits uh, to see mm -hmm. uh, that it was 
still improving. Uh, the mass got smaller and went away eventually. And um, yeah, it was, it was a, 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 a rough road for a year and then the blessings just came out. Exciting after. Mm-hmm. to see that change. That's good. Um, one of the biggest, like when I think about that time, I think about the nighttime mm-hmm. because we've really stayed awake just all the time. Mm-hmm. So now, you know, there's daytime and nighttime. There's a rhythm to that. There was no, for over a year, um, it was about a year and three months, Mm -hmm. there was no, it was like the nighttime was almost just like the daytime because we were, I mean, just awake. She had to be fed uh, every three hours. Anyway, so in the night, at one point, I kept getting sick um, at night, like throwing up. Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking, we thought, do I keep getting the stomach bug? Like, what is happening? It's like I was so exhausted. I was throwing up from exhaustion. Um, because we're just awake all the time. So one baby, okay, <clears throat> one baby would sleep on one, uh, Mitch's side of the bed, like in a bassinet, and Hank would, and then Margo would be on my side of the bed, you know, in the bassinet, not in the bedroom. Keep in mind, we had for months listened to those beepers go off in the hospital where they're... Um, the monitors go off The monitors every five minutes, and it wouldn't be something to right. alarm. And your first time parents. Yeah. yeah. Too, and that's a creamy thing crazy. to kind of stop breathing a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so anyways, so, you know, here we are home with them and I, I would just stay, stay without awake. Without Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So at home without those, mm. I would kind of stay awake all night, like listening to them breathe. And uh, Mitch, I would be able to tell by Mitch's breathing that he would be asleep and I'd, I'd wake him up and say, what are you, you're asleep. You're not watching your baby. And he's like, it's, it's nice. Like we have like to. We've got to sleep at some point. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, that is. I mean, uh, Hank would cough, and she's like, "Check on it." Check. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I that I would like come over him in a bed, like checking on his baby because he wouldn't. You're not doing his baby. Your job. <laughs> um, yeah, but anyway, so that's, that's something that yeah, stands so that out was, to you. Yes, that it was I just think one the night time. full year, no day or night. Yeah. yeah. The night time a lot. So speaking of that, adding another child into the equation. Shep, so tell us a little bit about having him and also how it felt from going from zero to two at once, or was that obviously challenging in a different way, but then going from two to three and how y'all felt about that? Zero to two was a little chaotic. Right. Um, and then we waited long enough for Shep that they got old enough to where everybody could help mm-hmm. with one. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have it any other way, though, so... Pretty sweet. It's sweet to watch them have another sibling. They love each other so much, and their mm-hmm. Hank and Margot's relationship is so sweet. And then to watch them enjoy Shep together, it's just it's really sweet. It almost feels um, like a little like us just even having him was almost like a little celebration mm-hmm. of like we made Everything it. Like we the made four it. Of you had been through. right. Like yeah, graduation like, gift. Yeah, like a <laughs> just. Aww. Yeah, just like a celebration. Yeah. That we and how many years yeah. are they apart? They are seven years apart. Okay. Um, we had Shep naturally, which was a really neat thing too, since we had had fertility issues, you know, and then with Hank and Margot, and then so that was kind of neat um, for mm-hmm. that to have worked out that way. Um, and then he came at what time? To term or was oh, he Oh, to early? term, yes. Full okay, term. so yes, when... When I was pregnant with Shep, we the whole time we would go to Little Rock every two weeks to a high risk specialist just to make sure everything was fine. You know, we even at before we were even trying, we we went and met with him to say, "Is this even responsible right. to right. to even try to do?" And he he gave us the go ahead. He said, "I think you can um, mm-hmm. carry a singleton, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. not twins, but you can carry. I think you can carry a singleton. Do it with one." And so it yeah, he went forty weeks, and he was. That is a celebration. And, That's like a sweet yeah, thing to get to It's do. been harder than I thought. You know, I thought, well, I've done two. I can do one. Right. But that's not. <laughs> it's been harder than I thought, but it's been super fun and sweet to, to Rewarding see. to have yeah. all three yeah. of them. So to close, what would you like to share with anyone who's either gone through this or is hearing your story and um, final words to them or advice to someone who's in it? Everybody is going to have, there's going to be something, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, difficult things that people go through. You could, um, my goodness, sometimes these stories don't end well, right. you know, sometimes people lose, people lose their children. Uh, people have chronic illnesses. People get a phone call, a diagnosis 
you know, a bad phone call. People are living difficult marriages, you know, that, that everybody is, you know, everybody has a valley. Um, and I think for a long time, I, you just want everything, that's kind of everybody's goal in life, for everything to go very smoothly. And um, it, 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 and you're always trying to avoid every, you know, everything not going smoothly. And I would say it's been the, the greatest blessing of my life, if not our lives, that, you know, that everything went really badly. And there was nothing that we could control. Um, you know, I had a lot of pride, you know, that I was convicted of, of, well, everything's gone smooth in life because, you know, I've worked hard and I, you know, all these things. And then, and God graciously, mercifully uh, humbled me, humbled my heart over that. And then it changes everything, you know, that changes, it changes the way you, you see everything, you know, in life and you can see other people in their, um, in their valleys, you know, and in their darkness, <laughs> she's tearing up, saying me tear up. Um, and then you're just more aware, which it's, it maybe sounds like, well, that's, well, that's sad, but it's the opposite. It's, it's actually makes for a more joyful life, you know, to know, um, it's when, you know, things are the darkest, you know, that God can show you, it's, you get a, there's a clarity, you know, and the humility that it brings in and that, um, I, I feel like that's kind of where God met us and where he kind of got our attention, not, not just get our attention, but kind of just, you come, you finally come to the end of yourself. Like when are you looking for God? Well, when you finally come to the end of yourself. Anyway, so I, I know that there's a lot, this is, it seems like, well, gosh, this turned out really well and it has, you know, it has, mm -hmm. but and I know some people's stories don't, but right. it's it's not something, I will look at all difficult things now, not something to be avoided, but now when difficult things, you know, come, I'll be watching like, what's he doing? You know, what is God doing in my so heart mm -hmm. and, and see it as an opportunity, even with our children, like nobody wants your children to have to go through difficult things, but then you think, well, gosh, how... You know, that's where character is built. To not pray for just a perfectly smooth life, but to pray for, hey, God, in those valleys, pray, you know, soften my heart, use use that as an opportunity to change who I am. Cause it did. Mm -hmm, it did. <laughs> Thank you. That was so good. It was just hearing you say that so well <laughs> after all of our conversations we would, had. <laughs> I could have not cried if she didn't. <laughs> We've talked mm -hmm. about this before. Yeah. It was just weird to do it on mm -hmm. camera. It made me like think back. Love you. Oh, I've got a really good, um, I'll tell Libby that and she can write about it. Sometimes like when you're in the dark, like if you're in a dark room, like when you were a kid or even now, you're like, it's just so dark and you just close your eyes. Like, but if you'll keep your eyes open, you can eventually like start making the, making out like there's the, you can see the light at the bottom of the door. And then if you'll just keep staring into the darkness that, you can like start making out the end of the bedpost. Don't shut your eyes, you know, just keep your eyes open. But I definitely shut my eyes. I was pretty angry. I was angry and um, scared. And so I felt like I did kind of shut my eyes in, in that instead of looking for him. Now, the good news is he kind of, um, you know, anyways, even met, met me in that. But then even smaller things now that we've had going forward, um, I do, I keep my eyes open in the darkness a little bit, you know, to be like, okay, just keep looking. <clears throat> You're going to well, see him and strength see. and freshness of, of yeah. that mm -hmm. feeling, knowing that he's there. That's such yeah. a cool it, testimony it, you'll have. It really Like helps. a perspective that most people can't speak mm -hmm. into, you know, mm -hmm. that's really neat. Uh, I worry that sometimes, and that's what made me nervous about the story in general, is you're like, man, some people don't come home with their babies. Right. No, I'm glad that you. You know, Cassie didn't come home with her right. baby. Mm-hmm. Um, but wait, but then it doesn't make it invalid. You know, your no. story is still valid. So yeah. Oh, we got smile, <laughs> smile, smile. <laughs> they started very <laughs> small, and now they're very big. No, you don't yeah. have to give us your way down. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years we later, we don't know it. I don't know it. I think I know one something. Yeah. Well, I know the number. We're back with twins Hank and Margo. Tell us how old you are and which one of you is actually older. We are nine years old and I am two minutes older. 
So you're the oldest? <gasps> okay. What is the best part of being a twin for each of you? I gotta say, Margo can really, I mean, we play together a lot. Right. Basically is all we do. What's the best part of being a twin for you, Margo? Um, having a sibling to play with. Having a sibling that's the same age to play with, that is pretty cool, y'all both like that. So, speaking of playing, what are y'all's favorite hobbies? I gotta say, riding my bike is one of my favorites. What about you? Mine is riding horses, drawing, and teaching gal tricks. Yeah, y'all have a lot of fun stuff, I like it. How do you guys feel about being a big brother and a big sister to Shep? Hard. It's hard? Hard. We're not, I gotta I agree. say, when I sometimes we're good, but most of the time we're not good role models. You're not good role models? No, not really. Margot, what is it like being the only girl since you have two brothers? Sometimes it's hard because they both wall in me a lot. Mm -hmm. They get in my room and mess it all up. Knew she like, was going to say, like she was gonna say that. It's like having a tornado Knew all the time. Knew she was going to say that. That's <laughs> a great description. I agree. What do you want to be, Hank, when you grow up? I really like scientists because I get to work with chemicals and I love explosions. Don't ask me why. That's awesome. What about you, Margo? What would you like to be when you grow up? I want to be a dog trainer or a roboticist. Wow. which make robots. That is awesome. There's our secret handshake. It's not really secret anymore. Good point. <laughs> That's so cute. Y'all made that up? Aw, I love that. <laughs> Tell us what is your favorite game to play together? Our favorite game to play, we watched this show called Bluey, and it's it shows these games that you can play. What is that? Uh, Tell this us is about the only it. one that Dad finally played with yes. us. What were you for Halloween? I mean, this year or last year? Because this will be in November. So tell us what you're going to be for this year. But what were you for Halloween? <laughs> what are we going to be? Yes, Halloween? what are you going to be? Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to be a zookeeper that has a little parrot. Oh, that's it, it was cute. so cute. What are you going to be? I am girl. What is that? It's um, a giant little tree monster, but he's oh, actually a little. That's he's good. actually pretty cute. He can, like, has different forms. He has adult, teenager, and baby. And one time he's just a little plant. Is Shep dressing up with you, too? No. Yeah. Not sure what he's going to be. We're not sure what he's going to be. Right. Margo, tell us about what Hank has. What's the story behind this? So, I thought that he needs something to get cheery on. Mm -hmm. At his football Since games? they didn't have any cheerleaders, so me and Rosemary were kind of the cheerleaders. That is so smart. So, I made this. He was 55. Show us what this is. 55. He's 55 Packers last year. I love it. looks just like you, Hank. You did a great job. He's a little messed up. Yeah, sorry about that. That's so fun. So you would hold that up at the games? Never! <laughs> Took me a while to make it. Tell us, what is your favorite thing to eat at Thanksgiving? Um, I think... What do we normally have for Thanksgiving? <laughs> what are you looking forward to eating, Hank? Uh, I am. I want one of that big turkey. Uh-huh, the, the turkey. You like that? And what do you like? I love those I like the macaroni and the... Um, the dessert you Me can't too. have you can't have Thanksgiving without dessert. You can't. It's jello. It's like homemade jello that put with oranges wow. and they are so good. Well tell us what you're thankful for during Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for my family and my dog and Texarkana magazine. You're so Yay. sweet. I can't wait to be yes. What about you, Hank? What are you thankful for? For like the same Thing. You're thankful really? for the same thing. And so that's You're both exactly. thankful for family and friends. Thank you so much, Hank and Margo. That is a wrap for the November edition of Texarkana Magazine. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Au revoir. <laughs>
Hello. Hello.